Joshua Snow again with Joshua Snow Photography and Creative Imagery. Uh, I was finally able to get up to a spot locally about an hour away in the Finger Lakes called the Finger Lakes National Forest and I've been curious about the spot for a while as it's between two of the Finger Lakes and between sort of two major cities. Uh, I thought the light pollution would be really bad but finally after months of chickening out and being too lazy to go up there I was able to make it and uh, I ended up having a pretty awesome time and shooting a pretty pristine Milky Way. I was really impressed with how clear it was and how little light pollution there was. Um, you can see here this is well not this one this is one of the adjusted raw files. Um, I decided to shoot, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 frames at ISO 10,000, 10 seconds each at 14 millimeters at f2.8. Um, you can see the clouds here. I think if these weren't here, this light pollution would have been really minimal. Uh, you can see over here there's a major city. This is a major city, well, major for upstate New York. This is Ithaca, New York, and this is Watkins Glen over here. But this Milky Way is just perfect. You can see uh, this was the white balance I, I shot it at. Uh, I had a preset Kelvin of 3300. I bumped the contrast, plus 10, brought the highlights way down, brought the whites way up, blacks down, and shadows down. This adds a little bit of contrast, and because I'm not going to use this foreground, uh, I'm not too terribly worried about what it does to the foreground. Because we're going to stack these to try to get rid of some of this noise, which surprisingly isn't that bad for ISO 10,000. Uh, bump the clarity a little bit, just a little. It's just always use a deft hand with clarity. It didn't do anything with the HSL sliders, but lately what I've been doing typically is I've been starting my workflows not in the basic panel, but down here in lens corrections. And this particular one I decided not to enable the profile corrections, but to go over manually and adjust the vignetting. I didn't I, I didn't see a lot of distortion. I didn't mind whatever distortion is there, so I just left it. Always tick the remove chromatic aberration box. Uh, and lately Instead of playing with the HSL sliders, um, I've just kind of been bumping these around. Um, this is something I've kind of always wondered about, but was kind of too afraid until a friend recently was like, hey, bump these around a little bit and maybe you'll like it. And I do. I, I think I like it. It definitely has helped me get a much more natural look to my Milky Way without making the blues go crazy, uh, maintaining the the pinks and the natural colors of the nebula here. Um, no split toning. I don't typically mess with split toning and never never mess with it. And uh, I did not sharpen any of these yet. I'm going to stack them all first. So once I adjusted this first one, I just control, or I'm sorry, shift click on the last one of that set and just synced all of my settings and then after I shot all those quick 10 second exposures I decided to shoot a seven minute exposure at ISO 1250 and I use photo pills to figure that out um, photo pills has this cool thing in the uh, pills section and if you don't have photo pills it's ten dollars for lifetime updates it's got tons of great tools on it but there's a a cool um, pill they call it in there called exposure and what it's typically used for is ND filters if you want to shoot an exposure with a three stop ND you can go in there and you can after you've metered your shot you can calculate how long your exposure needs to be to use an ND filter to come out with the same exposure <coughs> excuse me so what I decided to do is is I want my foreground a little bit brighter than what's in this shot. So I exposed for a 10 second shot 
plus a two-stop ND filter at a lower ISO, and this gave me roughly seven minutes. But you can see all the star movement here, but we're not going to use this guy. But we've got a lot less noise, very, very, very little noise, which we can mitigate just ever so slightly with some luminance. I just went plus two. Um, did some deconvolution sharpening, which is tough at this ISO because that does tend to make it a little bit grainy. So I did some masking here to try to mask mask it out a little bit, but still give some sharpness. So you can see here, maybe you won't with the compression of the video, but it's, it's sharpened it up a little bit, at least gotten rid of the color noise. So with that, I decided to use an app called Starry Landscape Tracker Stacker. So you're just going to select your whole set, right click, export. And you want to export these all to a folder. You're not going to do anything here. The file naming, just leave it as is. You're not going to do anything with video, obviously. Get to file settings. You definitely want them as TIFF. Whatever your working space is, I suggest Profoto, that's my workflow. You could use Adobe RGB or Adobe 1998. No compression and 16-bit depth. This is going to just allow you to keep as much detail and color as possible. Don't resize them. Don't sharpen them. Nothing with metadata unless you want to. It's, it's not, there's no point at, at this stage since you're going to stack 13 images. Um, I try to shoot when I'm going to stack at least seven or eight images just because I like to. I, I hate noise. Um, obviously not going to watermark. And then here in post-processing I have it set to open Starry Landscape Stacker. And then you're going to export. So what I've done is I've already exported and I have them all in a folder. So I'm going to go to my applications open up Starry Landscape Stacker, which is another cool one. It's a cool app for Macs. I think it's also available for PC, but I don't know because I loathe PCs. But it's $20, and it's definitely worth it because trying to warp and skew and stretch and line up all the stars manually for 13 layers is just a tremendous headache. Spend the $20. It's so worth it. So all you're going to do is here is you're going to select all your exported TIFFs. And you're going to see in real time, it's going to bring up all 13 layers one at a time. And then you're going to see down here, current image. I like to, well, we'll see it here when it loads. We'll let it load here for a second. So you'll see when it comes up once it's rendered. Um, I don't like to use composite image. I just like to use the last one. Um, composite will tend to give you all the star trails. But what I like to do here is I like to... Just kind of look it over and investigate, make sure that there's a lot of stars selected. I'm just going to blow this up so you can see it better someday. This is really simple to use. Um, it does a pretty good job of selecting. Sometimes if, it's got, if you've got something bright and distracting in the foreground, it'll, it'll pick that up too, like this house light over here. So it's got this cool thing over here called remove red dots, and it's pretty self-explanatory. But for some reason, it doesn't tend to pick up on these really bright stars. So I'm just going to add a few more control points just to make sure that it lines this up perfectly. Did a pretty good job. I had to add a lot more when I processed this before, but now we're going to remove some. Just going to remove this guy, remove that guy, remove that guy. So we don't want any of these clouds. I'm going to remove that guy too. So what you're going to do now, once you've done that, is hit next. I'm sorry. Next is just going to allow you to run through all the frames. So what you want to do now is hit Find Sky. 
and now it's going to stack them all using i'm going to assume it's going to use a median blending mode just like you would do manually um, converting all your layers to smart objects and then stacking them with a median blend mode very very it's the same way you would do it manually this is just so much easier so now what we're going to do is we are going to just kind of touch up all these spots that it missed so blue is selected blue is is what it's going to work with so it's not going to work with any of these clouds maybe just a little bit it did a pretty good job of going around these branches um, but because we're going to blend this later on with uh, the the uh, the foreground, the seven minute exposure. Um, we're going to use most of the branches and the clouds from that exposure. So now we're just going to align and save. And I'm going to show you a before and after once once this we import this back into Lightroom, and you can see the difference between a stacked and a not stacked sky. I haven't restarted my computer in a few days, so. It seems to be running a little bit slower than usual. All right, I'm gonna save this in the same place. I saved all my TIFFs, and it's gonna want it's gonna want to give you a, a whole image and just the composite sky. And the sky is the one that we're going to use later on. So once we've saved those. We can quit this, back in the Lightroom, back in the library, import, find your composite sky, this guy here. And import. So we're just going to go back to this folder. Since I already have one there. Okay, so here is the stacked sky, and then we look around, and there is no noise. No noise at all. It kept all that natural color, kept all that great detail, and if we look at this guy, Look at that. Look at all that grain and all that noise. Super clean in comparison. 10,000 ISO, 13 images stacked. Huge difference. This is why this is why this is definitely the best method for shooting the night sky. It kept all those stars super sharp, super duper sharp. A little bit of coma here, um, but no, very very sharp throughout. You zoom out, and there's tons of detail there. I mean, this Milky Way was pristine. I barely had to touch it. So once we've got sky and once we've got our foreground I like to work with smart objects so we're gonna right click open a smart object in Photoshop and the reason for this is when you have a smart object in Photoshop you can always go back and change your temperature you can change your tint you can do all of the uh, photo or the Adobe Lightroom settings here in Adobe Camera Raw it's the same engine 
it's the same thing. Uh, the panels may be different, maybe laid out a little differently, but same control, same power, and this is awesome. And I like to just keep them smart objects until I'm happy with the, the blend, and, uh, and it looks unified and the color is right, and then I will we'll rasterize these and I'll start working and building on them there to just kind of unify them further. But I'm just going to pull these both into Photoshop and then we're going to end here because it's going to get pretty in-depth here. Not difficult, but pretty in-depth. So I want to save it for another video. So right click. Open a smart job objects in Photoshop. I'm going to use some keyboard shortcuts so I'm going to tell you what I've done here. Um, I'm going to select and Command A, Command C, come over to this frame, and Command V, paste it right on top. And I, well, it didn't bring this in as a smart object for some reason. So one workaround for that is hit V is the keyboard shortcut for the move tool, and you can click and drag it into this frame, and then you can move it Lock it in, align it, and then you have your two smart objects. I'm just going to move this to the top. Rename this base foreground, and this one's already labeled, so it's great. So now you have your two shots that you're going to blend together in one file in Photoshop. We're going to end there and pick up next time where we're going to blend these two together in Photoshop. We're going to do some blending modes and... Uh, yeah, hopefully you guys will learn something. Thanks for watching.